Hello, fellow faithful. It is Bulldog here, world's greatest solar analyst, back with more CLG. We are 1 in 10. Split is not going good. Uh, Poe Belter looks like utter trash. We're playing Dignitas today. I got some water with me because it's pretty late at night, so don't need that caffeine. Shout out to Hydro Homies, and let's get into it. So I'm watching the VOD. I, so I have plenty of buffer, but Champ Select always starts a little too early. Uh, pretty standard bans on our part. Pretty standard bans on their part. The Aurelia seems to be getting banned. I haven't seen it actually get through, but it must be really powerful. Them taking away the Azir is probably a good thing in our part because Pobelter is atrocious at it. The Olaf is a perfectly fine pick. Um, I generally like the more utility-based junglers right now, especially since Broxa kind of does struggle a little bit with that power farming style uh, compared to other players in the region. I do really like the Rel, because Smoothie is extremely, extremely good at that champion. They grab the Kai'Sa. Another real hard hitter in the meta these days. And the Alistar. This is where it starts to get a little bit so worried. pretty standard there. Uh, <clears throat> in the bot lane, I don't really know what we're going to go. Yeah, we we have our jungler locked in, but and Dignitas doesn't, but Dardoch has a champion ocean, so it does not matter whatsoever. The Tristana, I do like that. It is, it can be a flex pick. It is very good at going in, being aggressive, so something very good for Wild Turtle. It's really, really simple to lane on and not too difficult to play in the later game because you just kind of demolition towers. So that would also be a good thing for Poe Belter since it's, it's pretty hard for him to screw that one up, but I'm sure he can impress me. There is still the threat of both of the soul lanes being picked later for CLG, so they are going to have their ability to answer that. You know, I do think likely we'll see the last pick left for top lane. We'll see exactly where they do want to ban them. So they fully expect the Tristana to go AD carry. I don't know exactly why they would ban Zoe because Poe Belter Zoe isn't very good. It does do all right into the Azir matchup. Uh, the Lilia ban. With some of the popular junglers out there, you know, I guess that's all right. I good, but I just don't see the power of the Lilia. Lilia doesn't exactly have the ability to take over a game, like, her ultimate is pretty powerful, but it's pretty conditional on its amount of power. And the Syndra, recognizing that CLG must at least blind pick one of these laners. They want to make sure well, we should pick top lane, lane here. Azir, so really we should much. absolutely lock in top lane. And we didn't lock in top lane. Which is just dumb. I actually really like Victor in the meta. Like, I, I, I don't mind the Victor pick. I think Victor's fine. But Tristana is a flex pick. We all know this. Dignitas knows it. And so leaving up the ability for us to flex it is very, very good. Have your upgraded abilities. Uh, the burst potential is absolutely incredible if you can get up on some of these squishy targets. So a pretty strong pick overall, and it will be. Renekton. But we do get the counter pick for Finn as a I was consolation. About. I think that would make sense. And we here, do get the counter so pick. Really know exactly where he wants to take us. Hey! Uh, in mid. Classic, right? You know, it's, well, it's so top strong. and mid. And there's nothing that you're really so. Oh, Cled. The Cled. Hey, Isaac, there we go. You were talking about that you is gonna new. Is. I don't. First, right? you know, I don't know how good the Kled is. This is the first time he's actually played it since coming over to NA. Kled is initially how Finn kind of made his name for himself in pro play. Uh, he really. Uh, they do have the Natalie Bernectin, kind of which is extremely there. powerful. I used to watch a, a fair bit of his games in EU. Just any time he would bring it out, I would love to go watch that because this is one of my favorite champions. I will say. Um. When you talk to a lot of. I would. I'm not a big fan of our draft. 
Kled plus Olaf though is an incredibly strong duo. So uh, yeah, bringing the junglers up and getting them. Involved, Kled plus Olaf like is that. really but strong early game, like but I think it really really falls off when you keep losing, later into the game. In your head, right? and, and... Not only is it the only vest that can stop. Okay, I have never gotten uh, ads during. It really can affect this before this, this channel usually doesn't have like so, uh, mid-roll ads they usually just have ads at the start in, of the game the quality seems to be kind of garbage for me but it's whatever i can see all i need to see find something to build on there because they need to start picking up wins if not for spring then for summer and any chance at trying to make it in towards worlds yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb right now and say that uh, CLG will not be winning anything in spring. Wait. If I am wrong, I give... Why does it say Smoothie left Jack. the game? But this could be a really, really clever flank. Because I'm not going to be wrong. But Dignitas is now maybe having their top... Okay, forcing Fake God to take okay. E level Fake 1. I think away. you don't want to take E till... And at least level yeah, 2 when you're next. It's a long term plan, right? Like, there's a lot of things to fix. They've got to be fixing those things. They've got Poe Belter. They've got Finn. Everything's ready to go. This is what yeah. they wanted to do. Well, we have Poe Belter, so we're two. doing the opposite of fixing a problem. Do they have what it takes <laughs> to bring everything in this roster together? Because, as you pointed out, and I think this is one of the most important things, it's not a development roster, man. This is not one of those rosters. It's like, no. hey, let's bring up a bunch of green oh. new names from the amateur scene. You know, like brand new guys nobody's ever heard of, like Wild Turtle and Poe Belter. That's just not the case. We need to see performance. Yep, they definitely do. I liked the attempt at the so, from CLG and, and, and Brox a solo starting bit. Raptors, you know, choosing an interesting path sword. here. He not really um, because he held the skill point one that you see too terribly often from skill. Olaf. Until there is a reason to oh, do so. he, he's, he's going Raptors Krugs, and then probably Red, um, which still, that I don't out, I don't know the merits skill, of that exactly. That Finn but Finn is point. very and much bullied. In matchups like this, when you are playing these aggressive matchups, so the this is looking out, looking like it's working out well. And Finn is a player capable of just taking over a game. What Cleds will do is at level two, you actually just don't skill up a point, and you wait until you have a fight, and then when you dismount, you level your W so that you have these reckless swings, you know, the quick attacks coming out, and you can go for a quick remount, and that basically allows you to have a one time only on use w activation right otherwise it just gets wasted on the minions then when it's on cooldown they will engage and i think we are going to see him do that you know see he hits level three he levels up the e and he'll just hold on to that w point until he actually needs to do it, it for is an all in or for a rebound. really interesting that from always want to see cloud players to going do for that it just uh, can make that first fight so much more effective this is the most big brain Kled thing I've ever heard in my life. You are doing for Kled facts what I do for Skarner facts. I never even thought about that before. Well, they're getting shoved in that, as he should. Wasted on minions a lot because you can't control when it activates. Yep. But saving the skill point, I like this. Is why you're the it's literal world champion. one time active. You know? This is why you're the literal world champion, bro. You get to cast that spell one time per game. Yep. You think summoner spells are rough? Broxa and, and Dardoch. Cool. Dardoch cool. is slightly cool. behind <laughs> Broxa's <laughs> pace, <laughs> but... <laughs> I we don't want to fight long here long because of how Olaf. Oh, Olaf's basically back to full health. From that, so and I can see how the uh, padding uh, from Broxa was really, really good there to clear the Gromp Blast so you get that <coughs> surge of health. Good job by Smoothie to turn that around. Good job by Turtle to keep safe and uh, engage. Getting first blood on Olaf is pretty good. That, that usually gives you priority on a lot of early objectives. <laughs> He's looking to double scuttle. He's level up on Dardoch, so he can't possibly fight. Smoothie is doing a really good job of trailing here. Uh, Finn has priority, Poe Belter has priority, so this could be a very, very good fight for us. Except, wait, what, what CC did they chain together there? So he's stunned by the Yellow Star, he gets dismounted. Oh, he didn't, they didn't chain together any CC. Renekton CC was just that long, and now Dardoch has a double kill and uh, a triple kill. And he's just going to proceed to run over this game. Oh my god, just it was like that. The wheels fall off. We're only four minutes in. No. 
but Darnock yeah, with a it was pretty kill, close. It was a like it, it was, was in Steel general, a pretty smart move by us. But passing. they had gotten the kill on the bottom side, grabbed themselves first blood. Off of this was just barely too slow. Akamu not getting the interrupt before Troll gets over the wall, and then Smoothie finding the opening, flashed in with the W, the stun to follow up, rocked and knocked him down, uh, and then there good was good first blood. Skirmish up on this top side. But we top. just we aren't really coordinated here. Out from the side here. And the key Wait, does does Dardock land a spear into Broxa here? Holy cow, that's a big spear. Yeah, they, this is, is a four v three because Broxa just stands there. There and doesn't do anything. He didn't waste it early on the mounted cled. He waited until he was dismounted, then stunned. He couldn't get the attacks off, couldn't get the remount. Yeah. Fortunately, Baraksa just kind of stood there and let his team die. At the very least, though, CLG. Uh, that was, was about as poorly as he could have possibly played it. Even, so we'll have to track ten Dardock snowball the game from here because he was the big beneficiary of what happened. You know, Turtle farmed out bot side. He is up in farm. Uh, the wave was actually really bad for Fake God when they took that fight. It was pushing yeah. towards Finn. And Turtle is up, really so far ahead, and he, ha he has a propensity to get ahead. Finn is pretty far ahead, too. Okay, Dardock 3 and 0 on a powerful jungler like a Nidalee. This is his chance to shine very, very brightly. Fake God continues to be just fine up here in the 1v1 against that Kled. Dardock with the double buffs prowling around this bottom side river. He will find a way into the enemy jungle, but he has to clear out this ward first. And it's not like there's any camps down here anyway. Broxa has been clearing through everything very effectively, as Olaf does, so not really much of a chance for Dardock to farm anything in here as Saligo will at least place down some vision to sort of keep an eye on when those camps are coming up and when Dardock can try to make a move. Dardock going to be invading pretty aggressively, but you can see Smoothie's already moving up towards the top side, and Dardock has been spotted. So there is a chance to turn this around. Oh, and once again, they end up killing off Kled before he's able to use the remount. Very well done, coordinated here from Dignitas. Yeah, this Kled just we'll doesn't seem like a good go pick. Dardock, and Dignitas is, is way better coordinated. Yeah, Rel Rome was coming up, but Aframu was faster on the play. Now and Pobelt there stepping too far oh, forward. Probably going to die for it. Uh, that was a good job by Pobelter to get out of that. Storm, but there's enough distance to still remain safe from that one. I'm surprised that a zero ulti hit him. It looked like it was a little bit too far to the side, but the very edge of the hitbox pulls Poe Belter away and ends up making him use his flash. Got them them thick thighs, you know, got caught right on the edge, pulled back in. <laughs> Colonel. And trying to get past the wall. I, but I holding off that game. play continues to snowball Wild Turtle right, really well, far ahead in farm, so map. if we are gonna win it, it's yes, going to be through Turtle. That first play, but he has been very proactive. He bought the early Moby boots off their skirmish topside and just books it straight towards top. Fake God going back to the minion to hit six and level up the ultimate in the middle. Wow. Off that. And Finn. To Finn, 1v1, potentially, if he had not had the presence of mind. Finn, to get like, that last little bit of would have killed him on the all in, but. But once he does uh, do that, again, Aphromo and Dardak were there. Dismounted form. Because he would have been able to remount. And, the spear will land. and, and get back into the kill. But. The remounts, Dardok is our Dardok and Aphromoo are so well coordinated. Just not strong it's enough pretty disgusting. And Kled really does depend on that so heavily. You know, you've got to get yourself in a position where you can play aggressively. It's it's a one note champion. It's go forward, right? And if you can't yeah. do that, you are worthless. And you've got to be able to be strong enough to survive through that potential burst to get remounts, or or you can't make anything happen. Well, down here in the bottom side, Neo and Afro Mool are still having to try to deal with Turtle and Smoothie. Smoothie only level four at this point in the game, so he has been. Afro Mool's level bit, five. Turtle being level Turtle's seven, a level ahead, and that's more important. But the AD carry is a level ahead than the support because the Tristana gets a lot of advantage off of level range, because her range increases, and that's that primarily how she and scales. Like Dignitas are making the call. Hey, back away. This could be really bad. They could be bringing. And we should be able to chunk down this turret a decent amount. That is exactly what CLG would be able to do if Dignitas did not. This turtle can bomb it and just. The fact that Dig is up gold, it's all in Italy. And at a certain point in the game, you kind of stop caring how much gold oh, is, I feel like. But the Nidalee you almost just completed her mythic, has, right? and which means that the, the turtle is now picking up multiple plates. So 
Yes, the, the moment Nidalee hits a spear, it's <laughs> that person's kills, life is just that over. That's a lot less value, right? He is going probably Night Harvester. He is going to try to snowball the game, but Neo has, has quietly really fallen far behind. And that is concerning for Dignitas because he is going to be an important part of their composition. Uh, oh, they could take it all in here. Africa about to face check the brush here, but he's Alistar. That's exactly where Alistar wants to be. Wild Turtle with a rocket jump away, yeah. but the rocket is about okay. to crash back down. That was just an idiotic well, choice. Yeah, I don't know if they realized didn't the realize that Aphromoo had six back. or what, but that uh, just so seems like a tilted choice. Away their bot lane advantage. When you see the Alistar face checking, I just don't understand. Why are they going for this? Alistar is six. Yeah. If you see him running towards you, yeah. you could just jump away. Like, you both have your jump. Or... Turtle could just bust your... You could just... Don't understand. Why are they going for this? Alistar is six. Or you don't even have to go onto the Alistar here. If you're Turtle, I'm pretty sure he's running, um... Hail of Blades. He can just jump onto Neo here. Before Aphromoo gets out of vision, they jump onto Neo... Smoothie can stun, just jump and it's like just a free kill. Your jump, and Turtle could just Buster shot the Alistar right off the bat, even right to, to like allow you to get that disengage. So that you just walk away from that, that didn't make any problem. sense to me. If the Alistar was pre six, I would actually understand that because it's phase rushed Alistar and maybe yeah, him kill down. him. Yeah, but when you see he's level six, you know he hasn't used his ultimate, or at least I hope you're tracking that. There's just no way you're gonna kill him off there. Okay. CLG, so this just is bit. not going very well for us. Uh, We're... Of these types of mistakes just seems like an easy one to avoid, but considering yeah. they give the freebie uh, over, I just don't, about it, man. No don't really know what's going on here. Like this one, you can't really be blamed on Pobelter yet. Dignitas tried to mount some sort of a dive against him. Junglers will encounter one another around Brox's red buff. But now, Gosh, oh no, could this the be another quality of the video is like right off the pretty yeah, bad. I wonder if it hasn't been like forward, uploaded to up. full quality yet on YouTube. There, but a good interrupt is going to mean Finn walks away. Can Brox do the same? Flash out keeps him in a decent enough spot. Still has Ragnarok, so Fake God doesn't want to do any sort of a flash stun follow up. Dignitas will not get a kill, but they have total control over the top side and they can go after these plates. Dardock summoning up the Rift Herald now second plate uh third plate excuse me will be mostly gone by the time shelly gets off that charge which means this headbutt should pretty much secure them first turret of the game this stupid minions walked in the way so now shelly got distracted she has no attention span but she does work. have a really hard head and there we go one big old headbutt couple more little bonks on the turret and there you go yep, first there's first the tower game. there's a huge snowball of gold on their gold part this point for fake god it kind of feels like it's at the point of no return for the 1v1 Finn played it well to escape there. He buffered the ultimate to get that mini interrupt on Fake God to create space so he didn't actually have to flash away to avoid that stun, which was nice. <laughs> yeah, we're played. so far behind. The fact that Dingtoss had three members up to that top side meant even Finn is down around, 1600 they gold. Defend the turret, so they lose the tower. Finn loses even more gold, and that is really concerning. I think Dingtoss has just understood the strengths of Kled as a champion very well. They know he needs to play aggressively, which exposes you to ganks. They know he needs to play from ahead, so they're going to him. They're putting him behind. They're punishing that aggression, and Finn is just kind of being put in the dirt. Really, really tragic game state right now for the side of CLG. You saw the gold pop up on the left side of your screen just a moment ago. And Wild Turtle is kind of the only person who's really competitive with the top earners of Dignitas. And even then, I say competitive as he's only a thousand gold behind. Dignitas is feeling very comfortable with the current state of the game and the leads that they have on their champions. Yeah, this <coughs> this one doesn't even like feel competitive. We'll have a lot of pressure on her to perform here in the mid game. We're just about 13 minutes in. Once the turret plates fall and people start rotating around more and we see those larger fights, it will be up to Dardock to hit value spears, poke these guys down before the engages actually happen, and continue moving the ball forward for Dignitas. And we may just see them continue to play through side lane, right? You already have this dominant Renekton. You're not worried about a 2v2. You've got four kills in the Nidalee. He's going Rocket Belt, which is actually very interesting. I can't say I've seen okay. Rocket Belt in Italy, uh in Pro Me either. Yeah, Rocket uh, Belt you know, is probably the right item to build in Nidalee. It's very good. Moonstaff style of build. So this is pretty interesting. It's going to be some additional playmaking. You know, it's just it's better than Night Harvester. Is 
nice about it is that it has uh, the passive that actually gives you, I want to say, magic pen, uh, the flat pen on it. So it's five magic penetration. You mean the mystic, one. the mythic stacking thing? Yeah, the mythic passive. Okay. So, you know, that is going to allow you, if you complete multiple items, to get some additional spell pen. Of course, he's not going sword boots, so he's not going to get, you know, to, to a kind of critical mass of that. Um, so to me, it feels mostly about just the playmaking, being able to close the gap, feeling like, hey, I'm so strong that I just need to be able to get to my opponents, and I will kill them. Let's see if that's going to be the case. I mean, there isn't too much happening right now, so there isn't a lot I can commentate on, at least on our part. We don't really have much vision control. It looks like we're going to make the Grand Dead play here. Turtle doing a good job of surviving there. Just barely. I uh, I don't know if we want to take this without Turtle, but it's kind of a desperation play because our comp was pretty reliant on Brox and Cl Finn being able, being able to snowball early and get us advantages that way, but they haven't really done that at all considering they're both down several thousand gold. The ultimate coming in there from Finn. That is generally how you want to do it. I don't know if the flash is necessary, but you want to have your main tank essentially just step into that absorb that charge and shut down the engage because then from there it is very difficult for the cled to actually get past the alistar if the alistar every time cled ult gets popped just stands in front make sure it hits him with the ultimate up you take very little damage and then from there you can actually just headbutt the cled away and largely he has been disengaged he's not going to be able to fight for you at that point to get to the kaisa or the azir down here in bottom side. Let's see if Saligo wants to go after Pobelter. Doesn't look like it. He has no ulti, so no reason to overcommit to a fight where your opponent has more resources available. Saligo's job is just to clear. And Saligo isn't that far ahead of Pobelter. So he wouldn't be able to win that 1v1. Unless Pobelter horribly misplayed, which is always a strong possibility. But now he could get caught out here because Aframu could hex flash over the wall here. Uh, Pobelter's doing a Good job man. of just wait, keeping just decently case, far back. So Ligo's going in, Ooh, that was. The shuffle, but the flash from is fast that was a good job by yeah, Pobelter to flash out of that. Was a quick attempt from Soligo, but forcing out the flash for the ulti, always a win. Turtle now does have the Kraken so Slayer, so he is relatively strong. But considering Dardock can just assassinate him, it makes it difficult for him to get off a lot of his damage. End up being the case, he's got to get up towards topside to be able to collect this minion wave. And now for Finn, he really is in the. And Dignitas is just doing a good job of pushing their advantages and just taking control over the map, denying us resources, and continuing to slowly grow their lead course here and will actually spot Kled coming in so Fakeo could just turn on Kled potentially and that looks like it'll be the case Shelly will fire off the second head but Azir turret summoned just so Dignitas are not in any sort of danger I, whatsoever. I don't think we win a 5v5 the waves. tier 2 turret for the side of CLG is down to about one third HP but Dignitas know that the Drake is spawning they should be the ones with priority over the river. They will arrive here first. Unless Move a turtle can get like a jungle. We'll see mad pop off. Are able to steal that one away just fine. Yes, they I don't are. think Does that's going to happen. But considering Saligo still has I'm surprised Dardock's only a level ahead. Go. They aren't too worried about his Brox has done a decent really job farming. Smoothie, losing half his HP, nearly the rest, as the Void Seeker and the Spear from the Nidalee both barely missed their target. And with control over the bottom side river, free Drake for Dig. Yep. And I think, honestly, it's better to have the blue buff on Dardak at this point because he went the rocket belt route. You you don't have any mana from your mythic item, right? You haven't built up any, whereas Leandris does have the lost chapter as that build pass. So Soligo will be a lot more okay with that. Uh, Dardak playing with the rocket belt. If you're just spamming out spears, you're going to go ooh, so fast. But Dig moving around the map. Taking down I mean, yet another tower here. They're going to extend the gold. Lead. We kind of really looking aren't in any one. place to be able to make a play. Then We're just kind of in to clear this out. Looks like our, our only plays are going to be absolute desperation plays. The base, they they outscale us pretty reasonably. Push, but right. still looking good. All right, back here in the mid so I, I'm, the I'm not really sure what we can do at this turret. point. They just DLG absolutely still snowballed us early, turret. and there isn't here much the we can do. No turrets, Azale. There's no turrets. <laughs> These boys got to pick up some structures. Yeah, I know. Got to go to school, you know, get a degree. Learn how to build some turrets. 
Let's see if we can get anything going. <laughs> I'm not talking about building them, damn it. I'm talking about killing them. We need uh, to find the stuff that the other guys built and knock it over. And it, I uh, know, an Azir turret does not count. Does not count. CLG's uh, yeah, got to shore up this. Get him, you know, even if it isn't <laughs> that Azir turret. And really, I mean, Azir turret does a lot of damage, but it's not very durable. It's kind of like no. you build a, a, a cardboard fort and then you put a cannon inside it, right? Like it can still put out some punishment, <laughs> but that thing is going to not last very long. No, if it rains and the cardboard gets soggy, congratulations. Ah, Your mom just told you to clean up that pile of garbage in the front yard and throw <laughs> it out. Well, that's about what the Azir turret is like after a while, but Dignitas are still managing to keep everything protected here. Having taken two turrets themselves, they're almost at a 4,000 gold lead here 19 minutes into the game. They're feeling all right. Yes, mm -hmm. they aren't continuing to build up the kills by great margins. It's still only yeah. 5 to I 1 mean, like it has been I mean, the only place while, I can really turn to where building, this game went super issue? wrong was that they are not uh, really Scuttlecrab fight where after Broxa got Clearly hit by the spear, as, you know, it, we, we didn't communicate to back off features, and just give because it was, it was now a 3v4. Down in this bottom lane looking to try to knock down another turret while they're pressuring mid. And they just feel like they're pretty comfortable playing towards a potential soul or Baron, looking for the picks as they do find them, and not feeling that they have to overforce. All right, Turtle has done a good he job of getting advantages for himself, but that's not it. Really got any angles? It doesn't feel like there's much of a plan right now to be able to stop this, other than hey, scale it up. We've got Tristana. If Tristana hits level 18 and six items, we can win the game. But that doesn't seem like a particularly effective strategy. Except I don't even know if we do win the game back. at that point. And Poe Belter like getting caught get away, once again. It's just his MO at this Hail point. Mary at least it's on a champion down. that's pretty easy to get caught on. Rather than before when he was playing one of the hardest champions in the game to get caught game. out on. That was so nice from Neo. Long range W there. Nails Poe Belter. I mean, the W would never really mattered, and that's just a free Baron for them, because we don't have our primary source of damage. Right now, we have no vision. We have to hope for the steal, which likely is not going to happen, or we have to t take a desperation 4v5. I'm a little surprised they didn't just try and finish off Baron. That means that CLG but have accomplished their goal of at least holding this off for the time We game. we at least yeah, held them off. We had that, to use a decent amount of resources to do time, so. Big, you just really wanted to force out the TP, right? They weren't going to commit to that until they could get some sort of a turn or force out the teleport. They get that teleport out. Here is the previous play. Long range. Perfect aim there from Neo. Pobelter yeah, but it wouldn't dodge, wouldn't have mattered too, too much because, time to do because so. Dardoch was on his way as well. Kill, it just and the ultimate out of Finn. It changed so whose that, hands go right got the kill. Turn, honestly, if they want, you know, anytime Finn shows on bot side now without teleport, you can threaten this. You know, there's really hardly any better combos in the game than the Azir and Kaisa when it comes to killing objectives. Broxa throws an axe over the wall just to check because he knows he knows how easy it is mm -hmm. for them to show up and just take that swiftly. With the top and Broxa the going the Gore the Drinker, right which is now, definitely the wrong move. Go, so they may just Stride, the Stride Breaker Belter is just better. Poe Belter, zero, two. Belter elsewhere on the map so he can TP in with the global. But man, four and a half thousand gold lead now. It keeps climbing up by five or six hundred every time I check in on it, but it does Yeah, Dignitas, Dignitas is doing a very good job of just slowly pushing seconds, their advantages. The not doing anything unnecessarily risky, the knowing that we'll make dumb collected. mistakes constantly, one, and soul. just After catching us out non-stop. Hey, look, a dumb mistake right that we made. Neo gets away, Smoothie does not. Aframu wants to jump and right they back just take the one. Here. Dignitas have taken a one for nothing, but CLG still have higher quality health bars on the remaining four men. Now let's see if Dignitas can translate this into an objective take here. They still have. We are getting a little bit of poke, but Dardog just landed a spear, landed a spear, and that is probably enough off of Turtle's health bar to zone him out of the fight. And Dardoch landed another spear. There is a three-man ulti or knock-up by Aframu, 
and the fake god did a good job of following up, so did Dardoch, and it's just pretty much game over. Poe Belter is walking forward into their team for whatever reason, even though if Neo or... Dardock hit anything on him, he just instantly dies. History of trade deals, definitely ever. No. Yeah, it's not what they wanted to see. They go for the engage, and Smoothie honestly had a very good turn here. You know, gets comboed, but then finds both Dardock and Neo. They just didn't have the follow up there, didn't have the damage coming through, as Soligo and Fake God warded members away from continuing that. And then Afro just finds the angle. Three members stack up. He goes in, even getting out with his life thanks to the ulti. On the bright side, I have Afternoon Neo on Spear my fantasy landed. team. So the maybe I'll finally win in that. Finishing him off. And Dignitas now over 6,000 gold ahead. One Dragon off Soul. The item completions are coming through left and right. You can see two to two and a half items really across the board here for Dignitas. While it feels like most people on CLG are just one pieces. CLG Turtle does have two items. I don't want to say it again. I don't want to say they've got to find a way to stabilize this because it feels like that's just been the story for so long. We yeah. reached the mid game. The tragedy for CLG this game is that they didn't even have the good early phases that they've had in the past. No, we right? just got completely yeah, outclassed at every phase of the, the game. Side river after the bit of a mistake from Afro move. Like our bot lane one. Thereafter, they have a bad fight in the top side river. The game but turns south, and it's been heading. Our jungle mid just kind of kept time. screwing us. So I'm just struggling to find that silver lining here for CLG in this game because the whole damn thing looks like a rain cloud, Isaac. Yeah, I feel like, to be honest, that dragon fight may have been you know, their best shot because there was a lot of low health bars and they had you know, full HP on multiple carries there. They weren't able to get in. They stacked up. They got combled. They got taken oh, down. Oh, we, we finally got a tower. Really tough here. Fake God. Just trying to stop but we might just trade Baron for it. Oh, we're getting priority on the mid lane. So we will crash this wave into tower, get a little bit of damage. We might be able to just chunk it down, but uh, Wild Turtle messed up his W, and so we pretty much just auto lose the fight off of that. Uh, Finn in the backside doing work, shutting down Neo, and potentially we can. I uh, get two. To escape. Yes, he will. Stasis for Dark. Oh. Shut down on its illegal, and that one is big. Oh. Poe Belter grabbing one of them. Okay. Now two. C L G. Do you believe in that fight like worked out for us? I'm not exactly so sure how. But I think Finn just got on a Neo and popped him. C L G. We just had to doubt him a little bit more. Think that it's out of reach for sure this time. And Poe Belter didn't get caught. With the team Which, fight look what there. happens when he a doesn't get caught in positions pretty well. Oh, he he wasn't there for most of it. That's why he didn't get caught. That's a really good engage by um, Smoothie. And good job by Finn and Broxa to prioritize the AD carry. And, oh, the explosive shot gets Saligo. So just poor communication on that front. Killed him there because I know he wasn't saying Saligo, and their E was actually on Renekton, and Saligo just didn't realize that the explosive charge was about to detonate, so stayed on top. That blows up and gives we got a tower, a kill, which also we gives him a reset we and allows him to jump at away. least so have a shred of hope there, now. That's at least enough of a turn to get us some vision, allow us to knock down mid lane tower, open up the map a little bit, and get some much needed gold onto especially Finn and Poe Belter. That ends up giving CLG a fight. Okay, okay. So we have a chance. Spear flies out, doesn't find a target. CLG getting into a bit of a scrap here in the top side against yeah. Fake God, but Finn backs away. Next Drake's in 25 seconds. CLG so we do need to, to lose any ground, send fight for this, whatever. but we haven't. I'm surprised we don't have much vision control over the bot river here, considering how much control over the map we had. Well, and Pobelter's spotted, and he's actually split from his team, so now this is pretty awkward. We'll have to see, because Dardock is, is You mean Pobelter being out of position? As he comes across. We'll what? See. Who would have ever guessed? So they are going to be together as a squad. Turtle's pushing out mid. 
but they've got to watch out for these after moon gauges because time and time again they have grouped as they go oh that's a good engage by smoothie and that was that was just really really clean that was really clean communication about their target and how to la layer their damage properly and but this is not that I, it pretty much is over because they're 80 carries down. We did use a decent amount of our uh, resources, but that's a really, really good engage by Finn onto the jungler. That knocks down uh, Fate God. Dardoch should go down here. Alright, Aphromoo goes down for sure. And that gets us Dragon, without a doubt. And... Poe Belter coming up, uh, coming up big. Turtle finishing it off, and that was the cleanest fight we have had all year. That was really, really good. That's that's what we need more of. Everyone was on the same page. Our timings were the same, and we were able to just burst one person down. This should also get us Baron, but this was so good. Smoothie catches out Neo, and instantly everyone just follows in, and we won the fight at that point. So the headbutt gets knocked out of the air, and as a result, the pulverize misses everyone. So the counter engage does not come through because of a beautifully timed Kled all ultimate there on the CLG side they kill off Neo immediately and then it was just about the extended play you know they're playing from such an advantage in Finn and Smoothie's communication there was so smooth from that rel able to force out the zonies and then it's really just the chase down and Saligo and Dardoch needed to fully bail out but they wanted to try and Pobelter seems to be really comfortable in the victor he's playing it pretty well and he's gonna be I gotta to give him credit where credit's due. These last couple kills. This just feels a bit disrespectful from Dignitas. Yeah. And now we have a gold lead. Things are starting okay. to look We're up for us. Our communication is good in this. Yeah, Poe Walter did a ton of damage in that fight. Poe, man, the notorious P O B seven thousand seven hundred fifty-five damage. In that last team fight, is that more six thousand plus four? Yeah, that's more than the whole enemy <coughs> team put together. The whole wow. enemy team put together. Or wait, maybe my math's bad. I don't know. Yeah, his math's the bad. It was it, it, it was slightly team. less, but yes, the enemy team did a little bit more from what I could in that see. Last team fight. Po Belter popped off in a way that uh, this so team Finn. And keep this yeah, we can we can probably go forward here. We could catch Fake got out here. Are finally in control, and they're taking Good ulti by Finn. Good job of catching someone out of position. This is something we haven't seen much from this squad. The communication seems to have tightened up here marching down the mid lane looking for their first inhibitor turret here of the game spears continue to fly out but clg does a good job playing around their own minions to dodge those and tank the hits broxa will continue leading the charge here for this would be a fairly impressive win if we can close it out on the inhibitor but they do not want to overcommit they do not they need two more hits from that cannon minion and it does get it wow exactly so we should be having like, yeah, just rotating up here, shoving this in, and putting pressure on to this tower. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind putting one person bottom and pushing that in, but Triss does damage, just so much damage to the tower so quickly that it's pretty good. Uh, it's fine. Like, we, we got what we wanted and backed off. I think I think it's more of a comeback than a throw because there there hasn't been anything grossly incompetent on Dignitas's part. They just got out team thought a little bit because of really really good engage combinations by Smoothie and Finn. They got to the Kaisa. They killed her off right to begin. And that just put them in such a position of power because there was no longer enough threat over on the Dignitas side. And we have so much gold in the pockets of Dardoch here on this Nidalee. He just can't do that much in a 5v5 compared to some of these other champions. So CLG now in a pretty big position of power. Turtle and Pobelter are way ahead of their counterparts. They have gotten a tremendous amount of gold. You can see 
the gold lead that Dignitas had built up. It was up to 6,000 plus gold. They are now down I can't imagine how other games would have gone if we would have so, given up the Azir and wouldn't pull Belder and Victor. I think they would have gone much better. Because he seems to be extremely comfortable in this champion. And Neo is a little bit out of position here. This is the kind of things people want uh, this could be a dumb move by us. I don't know. That's a good teleport by Poe Belter. Good job by Turtle in getting a nice flanking position. Get, uh, we get the kill on Dardoch. Uh, Aphromu goes down as well. And so does Saligo. So now we should... We don't need to... Okay. I guess we can just go for and ace them. And then we should... We should just be able to end since we have Tristana. Wow. Will double their wins and take down that was a very that unexpected so victory. For CLG, for I gotta give credit to Poe Belter. He played extremely well that game. Do they take down a team <coughs> and I uh, Smoothie is looking clean. Finn looking looking really good. <laughs> They're pretty excited. Finn and Broxa coming over from the EU, bringing some power to the squad. Uh, that wasn't that wasn't a very clean win, but we just kind of flipped a switch somewhere in the middle of that game. That really turned it around for us and got us the win we so desperately needed. So, good game. Um, a 1-2 and two weekend was better than I was expecting, so good job, boys.